Welcome, 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 and welcome. Once again, 360 Combat family and responsible gun owners and citizens and state nationals. We're going to touch the subject today. We're going to talk about blades. You get a lot of questions on blades, um, different lengths. What's this? You know, what's better? GM. Is is it is it a folder better than a than a fixed blade and, and what's the size and things of this nature. Now before we dive into that, okay. That's a that's a whole different rabbit hole. Okay, it's a lot of questions that you want to go and attach to that um you know takes a lot of mental fortitude because this is what it comes down to. When you're choosing a blade, it's like choosing anything else. Does it fit your everyday carry situation? Okay. Um, the difference between like this and this, right? With this sheath, you know, would this fit better than this? All depend on your hand size. Would this fit in this upright position? Without without showing and printing on my pants, things to think about. Uh, because I may have smaller hands, would this be better for me than this? Also, what's the characteristics of the blade? Hmm. Let's check this out. Okay. All right. Let me see. It's a training blade. Oh. Okay. Got a little more, little, little, little more extra things to think about. The false swedge on it, okay. Mm, a little longer. Got a little, a little tip on the end where I can hook on my finger. I got a tip on the fore grip. It keeps it in my hand. So as I'm thrusting and, and pulling back on it, it comes out really nice. Okay, let's check this out. Okay, this one. Okay. Got a little bit right here. Yeah, you know, real knife. I might have a little jimping in the back, but if I hit some, do you think my hand will ride over the front of that blade? If I hit somebody that had a plate on, a plate carrier, and it went like this, will my hand go over the front of it? Little things to think about. Let's switch that. Let's do this one, okay? And I hit that. Boom. Do you think that was be enough to stop my hand from going over the blade? I think so. Yes. So. What targets am I aiming for? Things I'll think about. So, the different sizes, you know, that I was looking at. You know, I, but once again, how are you going to conceal this in your everyday carry situation? Are you going to walk around with a, with a big Bowie knife on the side of your pants like you're riding a motorcycle? You in a motorcycle gang? Yeah, it works. Open carry. Bowie blades, yeah, that's work every day. No problem. But do I actually want to let you know I'm carrying a big knife like that? Now, let's talk about um we'll talk about some little, you know, you know, fighting folders or you know. Um do you want to carry a little one? Like this. This is kind of small. Okay. Um, this is this is Big Brother, so he's gonna, you know, this is Big Brother version. So look, okay. Yeah. Okay. Could would that if I stab? Would that stop my finger? Got a little jumping on the back. Okay. Would that be able to stop my hand from sliding over the front? Okay. Let's switch. Okay. Yeah. I see. Okay. Nice finger grooves. A little jumping on the back, okay. Would that stop my finger from going over the top if I hit a, a plate carrier or hit a rib? Can I can I pull it back out and have the knife help me with those ridges? I, I'm something to think about, okay. Um, as we talk about the different characteristics of the blade, things of that nature, how easy is it for me to get that blade out? You know, same thing. Get a little jumping on the front. No jumping on the back. It's like, would that bite in my finger to keep my finger in there? 
I got a little hook on the back with my, my fingers. I got small hands and big hands. Would that help me retract that blade back out between the ribs and things of this nature? So all these different things you have to think about. I got a serrated edge and a straight edge. You know? When I'm cutting with this, I'm cutting from what? From pinky finger to forefinger. That's how your cuts go. So when I'm going across clothing, that's what this cuts through the clothing, this cuts through the meat. If there's no clothing, everything's straight through the meat. So it's all these different questions that you have to ask yourself when it comes to your personal preference of blade selections and things of this nature and sizes and you know, bigger is better and all kind of stuff. But you know, it just depends. It just depends. I mean, it just depends on on you know. Do I like something with a mechanical? I bring it open slow with just my inertia, my finger or my thumb, doing that half moon, or do I want something with had that additional just assistant flipper? Boom. Depends. Just depends. Um, every state is different. Every state have their own rules and regulations. Uh, you have federal, state, and local laws that when it comes to knives. So just make sure you cover all your bases. Okay, um, you know you have like boot knives and neck knives, and you know, like what does that look like? You know, when you moving with these with these said knives, you know, how are you going to get to it if it's hanging off my neck and things of that nature? It's on my boot, you know, and I'm in a I'm in a, a situation against multiple opponents. You know, how am I going to get to that blade? Is it like this? Is it on my pants? You know, was it was it with sport front back? Is it is it uh, sideways? Uh, how how is it? What's the placement of it? You know, is it in, do I make a, another holster for it and things of that nature? All these things is your, your personal preference. So I'm not gonna make this a long drawn out video, but it's one of those things you have to think about. And what else am I carrying? What else am I carrying? Am I carrying a firearm? And I want my knives and stuff to be on the same side of my firearm, or do I want my knives on the opposite side of my firearm, along with my magazines or? You know, what capacity am I working? Am I a police officer, a right, security guard? Am I just Joe Smoke's civilian, CCW holder? Like, what's the case may be? So I just want to give you, you know, it's not a long video, but I just want to give you a lot of just food for thought, a lot of little tactical tips that I've learned over the years of just traveling the world and acquiring blades, knives, forks, spoons, uh, potato pillars. I mean, I've used everything as a blade, you know, but, if I put my hands on it, it's gonna, it will be used as a, as a blade, a stabbing or, or, or a slicing instrument. So um, think about that, folks. A lot of people ask me so many questions when I do these knife blade courses, and uh, I give a lot of them. And so I always in, in like to, anytime I give a firearms training, I like to educate people on the effects of knives. Because some people think, oh, don't bring a knife to a gunfight and all that. Kind of, okay, you can say what you want. People who have ran up against a knife in a gun battle and have been cut the hell up, will tell you the difference. It's a different ballgame when somebody rushing you with a blade and they slicing and dicing. And a gun, you got to be a little bit more accurate. With a blade, I can cut your whole finger off. While you still trying to hold a gun, I can slice through the small metal coppers in the back of the hand. I can chop that thumb off with a good whack. A lot of things can go bad in, 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 that, in that physical altercation. Not to mention, I'm running with body weight. So imagine somebody just put the blade on a person and just push with the body weight the penetration you're going to get just say you push and then you give them a twist then what oh my god more injury to injury injuries to injuries to injuries you went in with a slice now i'm saying you start out with a circle <laughs> and man it made a w or whatever the case might be so uh, choose wisely choose the weapon that's going to fit your environment your everyday environment and make sure, I know a lot of these blades, you can take the, like this, you can take the, the clip off and put it with face and blade down, or you can have it with a blade up. All dependence is just your left hand or right hand. So also, I want to be able to be ambidextrous with my knife, same way I shoot, ambidextrous with my firearm. If I pull it out with my right hand off my pocket, off my pocket, it comes up. If I pull it off my pocket with my, and I just keep it the clip the same way, it comes up what? See, the point is up. 
So now I got to turn it around and then rotate out. Okay. Some people will say, well, I don't want to do that, GM. I just want to take it and just physically slam it straight down and get a reverse grip. Or some people might say, hip it, flip it, and then take the thumb and flip it and carry it this way. A lot of styles up there. A lot of different styles. A lot of different ways. A lot of different preferences that you want to use. It's up to you. But do your due diligence. Do your homework. Okay? You only have one life to live. So before you walk out the door to carry something that's going to protect your life or somebody else's life, make sure you do your due diligence and make sure you practice before you bring it out. Okay? Don't just come out the house and just open the box and just put it in your pocket and just came outside with it. Make sure you practice with it. Or make sure you get you a training blade that's the same as your fighting folder or a training blade that's the same as your um, your fixed blade. So, uh, let's see, this and this, okay. So that and that will be the same, okay. Oh, matter of fact, let me go one up. Let me go one up and see if this next one. Yeah, I think that, yeah. There we go. So similar characteristics. You know, while well, I'm not trying to go too much, I understand the angles of attack, you know, and what am I doing with this, and why am I doing what I'm doing with it. So it pays to practice. And and uh, I have a couple uh, fixed trainers here that's the same as these, that's training blades, that I have students work on your tying room, getting it out. Get it out and get it up. If, it can't, if I am unable to get it out of my pocket, I'm not going to bring it into the altercation. And I hate the word fight because it's not a fight. A fight is when you have the definition. The fight is when you have someone with a striped uniform on and he's letting you know what you can and cannot do. If we're in the street, it's combat because I don't know what you're trying to do to me. So in my mind, you're trying to kill me. You're not trying to fight with me. There's no referee in the middle. If there's three of y'all, you're not going to say, okay, I'm going to hit him first, and he's going to hit him second, and he's going to hit him third. You're not taking turns. You're not drawing straws. You're not rock, paper, scissors, and all that kind of, You're not doing none of that. Everybody's coming to get some. So where's your mental capacity for violence? So when you bring that said weapon to the forefront, remember this. Whatever you bring to the fight can be used for you or against you. I'm going to say it one more time for the people in the back. Whatever you bring to the fight, you can be it can be used for you or against you. If you're wrestling with a guy, you grab him like this, and all of a sudden the guy sees you have a knife on your pocket, and his buddy grabbed the knife off and starts stabbing you with your own blade. You're grappling with a guy, and all of a sudden he sees you got an ankle holster on with a blade on it, and the guy just takes it out and just starts stabbing you and stabbing you with it. You brought it to the fight. You brought it to the party. Okay? Whatever you bring to the party, folks, will be used against you. That goes for law enforcement. That goes for anybody on the street. That goes for anybody around the world. How many times you see people, you know, jump out the car with a baseball bat, and all of a sudden the person gets the baseball bat taken from them and get the hell beat out of them with their own baseball bat? It happens. So, always be thinking. I, I, I create thinkers before fighters. Because if you if you put your mindset into it, you don't have to fight, okay? There'll be no battle. Now, I can always choose to disengage. I can always choose to take, take myself out of the comp. Hey, you know what? You good, you right, whatever you want to say, you do, do. bang, peace out, we good. It's, it's your world, it's your world, boom, I'm out. But what if they don't want let you do that? What if they follow you to the car? Or they follow you outside? Now it's a different ball game now, folks. So you got to understand and, and be thinking about it. what am I willing to do now to protect myself? I gave you the glory. I'm backing down. But that's not good enough for them. You think they're still trying to play with you? Or are they trying to hurt you? Think about that, folks. Think about that, folks. Grandmaster, Andre Glenn, peace, love, and happiness. One.